We are so happy tonight to have with us our very good friends, Brother uh, Abel and Scarlett Bonilla. These are some of the greatest young people that I know. I'm so thankful for them. And uh, I have to tell you, they are anointed and they are talented, but most of all, they love God. Uh, Brother uh, Abel, his father is in the ministry and he has uh, a whole bunch of brothers and they have a band that's award-winning band. And he had scholarships to three colleges to play soccer. And the Lord got a hold of him and called him to preach, hallelujah. And I believe the Lord is gonna use them in a powerful way. And they both came before the board this past week and they both received their ministerial license. And uh, they're both licensed ministers of the United Pentecostal Church. And we are so glad that they are here from Fort Lauderdale. Would you welcome Abel Badia? God bless you in Jesus name. Amen. If that was for me, that sounded good. But I believe that we can give God some praise right now. Just worship him right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're a good God, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. We magnify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're faithful. You're good, Lord. Your goodness and your mercy follows us, God. Everywhere that we go, you are faithful to your people. You are faithful to your people. Somebody believe that. He is faithful. Hallelujah. Oh, I know the Spirit of God is in this house. We have felt him. I know that if you were here in the morning service, you felt his presence. I believe that strongly. I want to do my introductions before I'm, I'm ready to preach. I got to pause for a little bit. I just want to say thank you to Pastor Myers, Sister Amy. And, and I, I love them very, very much. Uh, we met about three years ago, I believe, at a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale. And it was such an awesome time to spend with them. And, and something I love about your pastors is their passion for young ministers. They believe in us. Buddy. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually fill my mouth. I know you feel the same way tonight. I know these young people felt that way tonight. And I'm so grateful to be in the house with like-minded people of faith tonight. I'm so grateful to be here with you all. As they were singing that song, Let Your Kingdom Come, I felt the Holy Ghost come over me. Because it's so true that, that a kingdom is coming. A kingdom is coming and God's not coming back for a weak church it's not the time to quit on God it's not the time to sleep or slumber it's not the time to give up hallelujah there is a spiritual war going on and that's because the enemy knows that God's on his way to get us He's here. I love when David said, Thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. Thou, O oh Lord, are my glory and the lifter of my head. When I feel the war, that spiritual war starting to crank up the heat around me. And when I know that the enemy is aware that God's coming back to get me and he's going to do all that he can to cause the church to stumble and fall. I'm thankful for the word of God that says that the gates of hell, even its very gates, will not prevail against the church of the most high God. And I'm thankful to know that you guys are a people that believe that tonight. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I'm so blessed to be here with the Myers. We love them so, so much. I'm thankful for, for leaders like them that uh, not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. And our generation has so much to glean and learn from them. And I'm just so thankful to get to spend some time with them and you all tonight. And I'm excited to hear the word of the Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. She should have just preached the message. Hallelujah. That's why I don't bring her often to the pulpit before me. Yeah, it's a joke for those that didn't laugh. Amen. I want to, um, I'm glad to see my friends, Patrick and Deborah, amen, who are here. We love you guys dearly, and I'm so glad that you guys made it tonight. Amen. 
I want you to open your Bible with me, if you would. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. The word of God says, but ye shall receive power. Say with me, power. power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. Say with me, witnesses. witnesses. Unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I want to speak tonight under the subject nothing happens until something moves you will leave your bible there and lift up your hands with me and i want you to pray with me don't leave me just praying alone but i want you to lift up your voice and i want you to begin to declare things in the holy ghost right now begin to declare things in the atmosphere jesus i pray that your will be done lord as it is in heaven in this place in this house god i pray that you would prepare the hearts of every young person, of every adult, of every children, Lord, that is in this room. God, I pray that my lips, Lord, that a coal of fire will come and touch my lips. Let me speak heavenly wisdom, Lord, not just human wisdom. God, let your spirit, Lord, move in this house. Let your thoughts be in my mind. Let your desires be in my heart. Let your words be in my mouth, Lord. I believe that your kingdom is moving, that your word is true, and you are about to touch, and you are about to restore, and you are about to do the supernatural in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. One of the greatest minds, scientific minds of the 20th century, Albert Einstein, who is known because of the law of relativity and for his contribution to science, he compiled and uttered the following words perfectly. He said, nothing happens until something moves. I'm a strong believer that we are called to influence the world. As people of God, we are called to be, uh, uh, to influence the world. I believe that as the church of the living God, we ought to be giving signs of life in such unprecedented times. Matthew 5, 13, 16 says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I believe that the church of the living God ought to influence, though the world want to set their laws on our generation and all the young kids that are coming up, I believe that the, the church shall say is take a stand and say no, for we shall follow the word of the living God. <laughs> Acts 1 talks about power. And that's something some of us shy away at times, including myself. I include myself in this. I shy away from this because it's a little scary to think that, there, that, that, that virtue can come out of me. Sometimes it's scary to think that something can happen when I pray to God. So some of us sometimes believe that there's, there's only one Pentecost, that there was only one Pentecost, and that, that the power that was shown at Pentecost and the power that is told in the book of Acts, sometimes we believe that that cannot happen today. Sometimes we doubt in our human minds and we think, that the power and the fire that fell on those 120 that were sitting in the upper room cannot happen today. Not only talking about the Holy Ghost falling, but sometimes we don't believe that God can perform the miracles that we hear and read in the Bible. I came from Mexico and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my testimony tonight. And I'm going to do that because I, I know my testimony because it's my testimony. If I knew your testimony, I would share your testimony. 
But I was in Mexico, and growing up in Mexico, it was, it was hard to, to, to go to the doctor. It was hard to have access to medicine and have access to some of the blessings we have here. But something I loved about being there and depending on God was that I was able to see things happen at a church service. I was able to see the lame get up and start to walk. I was able to see blind people recover their sight. I was able to see supernatural things that would take place in a service just like this one tonight. And I'm not saying it can't happen here today, but sometimes it requires faith. To step into the supernatural. Somebody say amen. amen. So I strongly believe in revival. I believe that we don't need more of God to appear from the heavens. We need more of him to appear out of us, the church. Yeah. Revival is in a special place. Revival is not a service on a Sunday night. Revival, hallelujah, is not just a title we like to put on a service. No, 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 no. Revival challenges our usual way of thinking. Revival confronts old wineskins. Revival will make you hunger and thirst for the things of God that were once dead. That's revival. It challenges our obsolete traditions. It provokes complacent Christians to step out. I believe that we're not waiting on revival today, but I believe that revival is waiting on us. John 4, 35 says, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Oh, Jesus. I was in... Mexico as a young boy, and I remember not being the best Christian a young boy could be. My parents have been in ministry my entire life. I come from uh, parents who have sacrificed a lot for the kingdom of God. And uh, being in Mexico and growing up there, there was a period in, in my life that I, I wasn't doing so good. And I like to be transparent because I don't want you to think that I'm this just holy guy up here. But I wasn't doing so well. I wasn't, you know, I, I mean, I, I went to church. I was involved in the music team. I was playing drums. I was doing all these things, you know, that a pastor's kid usually does. And I mean, just help out in any way I could around the church. I so happened to play the drums and I was, I was very involved. But I remember that um, um, I was in middle school and, and being in middle school and seeing what God was doing there uh, through, 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 through my life. I mean, I didn't see it then, but I, I now I look back and I understand that God was moving. And I remember seeing and talking to some of some friends on a Wednesday night or Wednesday morning and now we were talking about what is it or who is God? What is this God? And when we're talking and, and, and I was, you know, I was blending in well with them. I kind of spoke like them and I did things like them and I, I, I didn't look apart. I looked the same. And when sitting and listening to them and seeing the desire and, 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 and how they, 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 they hunger to know who God was, something shook me. Sitting on that classroom, in that classroom at, at, as a 15-year-old boy, I remember that I began to express to them what I, what I knew or what I, what I heard at church. Oh, you know, maybe God, God, you know, came to earth to save our sins. Oh, maybe we're all sinners. And I was acting like I didn't know God because I was ashamed and I was afraid. What are they going to say? What are they going to do? Am I not going to have friends anymore when I come back the next day? So I didn't want to show them that I was a Christian. But something didn't let me and something said, Abel, hey, well, speak. And I begin to talk, and I begin to express, and I begin to share the gospel to these young people in my school. That very day, they, they came with me to school, the church. We had midweek service on a Wednesday night, and, and when we're there, I was lucky. Because, I mean, I don't, we don't believe in luck, but it's just an expression. The Lord's favor was upon me. Because I wasn't scheduled to play drums that day. So I, I sat with my 
classmates, we sat together and we began to, you know, worship was going on and, you know, inch, 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 inch. That's how we worship in Spanish, if you didn't know. You know, we got the little... Dun, dun, dun. We like cumbias and merengues, you know, that kind of stuff. So the worship was going. And as the worship is going, I, I, I kind of began to, you know, oh, like, oh. And I, I would look at my friends kind of thinking, you know, are they going to react? What are they going to do? To make the story short, I remember that most of them were touched by the Holy Ghost through that invitation. Many of them were at the altar. Many of them were crying. Many of them were touched by God. But no one made a decision to change their life. I had one friend that couldn't make it to that service. That one friend who had issues at home. That one friend who his parents were, 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 were divorced and the mother would show up with a knife in her hand screaming at his father. And, and that one friend that his father was a taxi driver who, was, who, was, who didn't have the best vocabulary. He, he had a very colorful vocabulary, if you know what I mean. He was very expressive in the negative way. That one friend who had a broken family didn't show up that service. A couple more invitations down the road, I remember... He shows up on a Sunday uh, at 2 p.m. for our youth service. Kind of like what we were doing here today. These young people did an amazing job, by the way. And as we're worshiping, and I, as, as, as I, I was playing drums at that time, so I couldn't hide, you know, that I was a Christian with this one. I was playing drums, and I, I see my friend sitting, and I, I told some of my other church friends, hey, just take a look, at, you know, just make sure he feels comfortable. And as I'm playing the drums, and as I'm worshiping God where I was, I begin to see that the young people begin to worship the Lord. And they begin to move, and they begin to get out of their seats, and they walk to the altar, and they begin to, to, to worship God. And I, I noticed that my friend, uh, Ramses, is sitting there, and as, as everyone's worshiping, he's just kind of looking around, and he's a little confused. What's happening here? But after a while, I begin to see Ramses, he's kind of jumping with the youth group. And Ramses begins to cry as he's worshiping the Lord. And as we begin to worship, and as we're worshiping, Ramses begins to cry, and you can see that something was touching him. The service ended. And our youth pastor says, who wants to get baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins? Ram says, gets up and says, I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. Now don't clap yet, because the story is not over. Ram says, starts coming to church. He starts coming to church with me. We start just talking and, and, and we're, we're just on fire for God. If I wasn't on fire, I was on fire now because Ram says was coming. And as we're worshiping God and, and doing what we were doing at school and at church, Ramses invites his father, and his father shows up to church. Yeah, the taxi driver, remember the one I told you that had a colorful vocabulary? He's sitting in the back, Mr. Guillermo is sitting in the back, staring at Ramses at the front, worshiping the Lord. And his father was thinking, what's going on with this boy? Why is he jumping around? A couple months later, the father gets baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of his sins. But the story doesn't end there. The father and Ramses are in church. A couple months down the road, grandma shows up and the cousins and the aunts show up. And now they're sitting in the back and they're staring at Guillermo and Ramses worshiping God in the front. To make the story short, 30 members of that family were baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins. Ramses is pastoring now a church of 200 members in Mexico City. But guess what, church? It's because someone took a move. Someone said, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. And I am going to go and share the gospel. And I am going to go where it seems I'm comfortable. And I am going to go reach those lost souls. It takes action to see miracles. It takes action to see lives change. It takes action. Nothing will happen if you don't move. 
nothing will happen if you don't move. Somebody say amen. amen. We often talk about a move of God's spirit and we think that everything depends on him. But what heaven is waiting, what God is waiting is for a move of his people. He wants his people to move because when God's people move, mountains move. When God people's, when God's people, sorry, move, demons flee. Every wall, hallelujah, of depression will have to fall. Self-esteem increases. I don't know if you're believing what I'm saying here today. Cyber addictions are broken, hallelujah. Defiant behaviors are no longer defiant behaviors. The guilt you once, once felt is no longer there. When you move in faith and you activate your faith, signs and wonders follow. Mark 16, 17 says, and these signs follow. Now notice, to in order for someone to follow something, the object needs to be moving. Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall make up serpents, shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. But things, things happen when you move, when you activate your faith, when you step out of your comfort zone. Hallelujah. I need a water break. I believe that we are in the last day revival. I know we hear it. I know it's a thing. I know you've heard it before, but I truly believe that my generation will see the second coming of the Lord. I believe that it is this generation that will see the second coming of the Lord. But just like we're in the end time revival, I believe that there's going to be things that are going to happen. That not only are we going to see that in the church service, but we're going to see it outside of a church service. We are going to see miracle signs and wonders outside of these walls. I believe that there are young people, hallelujah, that after this service and after another service, whatever service, when God gets a hold of them, something's going to shake them. And they're going to go and activate their faith. And they're going to step into the supernatural. And they're going to step into places they never knew God was going to use them in. Acts 2.16. But this is what was prophesied, spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Then we ask, how do I start revival? How do I start moving? How do I start activating my faith? Simple as sometimes teaching a Bible study. There's been times where I, I don't want to teach a Bible study. I want to stay home. I want to relax. My wife and I started a Bible study with a couple people in, in our church, and we do it every Thursday. And a couple times we've, we, her and I have felt truly, we're like, oh man, we, uh, we should cancel today. Oh, yeah, I, I would, you know, let's just stay in, relax. But we continued and we pushed through that kind of thing. And as we did that, we began to see some fruits coming out of that Bible study. Young man, hallelujah, who came from Nicaragua, a couple in, back in November, got the Holy Ghost in Easter. Family, hallelujah, are coming to church. They're bringing people with them. Things are happening. But that happens when someone activates their faith and someone says, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop complaining. Pastor Myers kind of uh, mentioned a little bit about my testimony and how I was called uh, to preach. And, and he kind of said a little bit about it. And I wanted to share that tonight because I believe it, 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 it exemplifies what I'm speaking of today. I'm not more spiritual than you, I promise. But I was in uh, high school. I was trying to make a decision in my life. I was in a crossroad, very intense crossroad. And I remember being there and 
I, I love the sport, soccer. I love soccer. And so that's my sport. I, you can talk to me about football and all these things, and I'm clueless. But once you say soccer, I'm all there. You got my attention. So I was, I was playing soccer in high school, and I was, you know, I loved it. I, I had a dream, and my dream was I'm going to, I want to do this professionally. And, you know, those are, we all have those kind of dreams. And as I'm in high school, and I'm, I'm, it's my senior year, I'm preparing for this this season because I was, you know, these colleges are going to come, they're going to see, and I want to do my best, and I want them to check me out, and I want to get these scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. Something happened. As I'm, as I'm playing in the preseason, we're playing a game, and I get injured. I got injured in my shin. Um, my, my bone was bruised, and my muscle was bruised. I couldn't really walk. And that brought some frustration to me. Because I was trying to really get scholarships and really follow this, this, this dream. So I remember that uh, I, I visited a couple of colleges and I talked to a couple of coaches and, you know, they were, they were telling me, oh, we're going to come, we're going to come see, we're going to come check you out, we're going to see what you can do on the field and based on that we'll kind of talk later. So I was a little stressed because they, they, I couldn't play and I couldn't, you know, just show off, I guess. And as, I'm, as, as our team is practicing during the week, I'm sitting on the sideline. I, I made a buddy. His name is David. David and I would just sit together, and he was part of the team. But his hamstring was, was messed up. And David couldn't walk or run either. And we were both just sitting there. We were both seniors. And we were thinking, you know what? I think this is it for our season. I mean, we're not going to do anything with it. So we go to a conference. And I'm a, I'm, I told you, you know, I'm involved in church. I, I play drums. You know, that was my main thing. So we go to this conference in Dallas, Texas, and as we're in this conference, uh, you know, Friday night, powerful night, you know, lives change. Saturday comes, and Saturday morning, there's something about those morning sessions that just, God does amazing things there. Don't skip morning sessions if you skip. We show up to this morning session, and as we're in this morning session, I'm about to play drums, and, and Pastor Tony Suarez preaches on miracles. Healings, and as he says, you know, there's 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 miracles and healings in this house and the congregation. He built the faith of the congregation. The congregation after his sermon, everyone was at the altar, ready ready for the altar call service and, and the music and you know just the, the the best part, I guess, of the service. And as 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 he's about to take off with praying for the needs of the house, I remember him turning around and saying, "There are three young men who desire." God and God is calling you. At first I doubted and at first I said, you know what? No, I want to follow this dream. I want to go to these places. I'd rather do that. But then I got convicted. And I left my drumsticks and I walked to the front and I stepped right behind the preacher. And as I'm stepping there, like every good Pentecostal service, the preacher says, three young men and there's 50 up there. You know, <laughs> it happens. I didn't let that discourage me, though. I didn't let that discourage me. And I, I stood there, and I, was, I, was, I felt the Holy Ghost in that place. And as Brother Tony Suarez begins to preach, or begins to prophesy to the young men, he says these words. He says, let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume your bones. And as he's saying these words, he's pointing at every young man that's on, in, in, in the line right behind him. And as he's pointing at us and he's saying these words, I literally felt fire in my bones. And I felt the flame in my hands. I felt, hallelujah, that the Holy Ghost was filling me up at that moment. I was speaking in tongues. I, was, I couldn't even take it. I couldn't even stand it because it was so powerful. I remember after that event, he says, go and start praying for these people. And I went up down there and I began to pray for people. And the Spirit of God led me to seven people that day. I know that sounds very spiritual, like, oh, the Spirit of God told you seven. I don't know how to explain it, but he told me, like, it was seven people. That's it. I'm sorry you're going to leave thinking he didn't really explain that well. But I get down there, and I begin to pray for these people. And to my surprise, my leg is no longer hurting. That was a blessing. But then I get back to school on a Monday. 
I go back to my routine. I go back to what I know. I go back to the people that may not have the same faith I had on that Saturday morning. That's where I was challenged. So I go to this soccer field and I come to my coach and I say, Coach, I'm ready to play. God healed me this weekend and God did something amazing. I'm ready to go. My coach is looking at me like, you're, you're a little crazy, man. You Pentecostal people. That was a joke. Amen. <laughs> and as I'm getting ready to practice and as I'm getting ready to do these things, I turn around and I see in the sideline, I see David. My friend who was injured. David is sitting in the sideline. He's just ready to have another boring day. And I remember I ran to him. I walked up to him and I said, David, do you believe that God can heal you right now? And David looked at me like, uh, are you okay? <laughs> so seriously, he was looking at me like, are you okay? And I stared at him and I said, David... I believe God can heal you right now in this very soccer field. I told David, David, where does it hurt? He told me exactly where it hurt. And I got on my knees. I remember getting on my knees on that, on that Monday at 4 p.m. where I practice. And, I, and I'm getting on my knees and I'm, I'm touching the spot that hurts. And I begin to pray. Now, don't be fooled, church. I didn't feel powerful. I didn't feel amazing. I felt vulnerable. I felt scared. I was thinking they're going to make fun of me. All these people, these varsity and JV players, there was 40 of them in the soccer field. And I thought I was, my mind was just spinning in circles and it was saying, they are going to make fun of you, Abel. But I let my faith be lifted up in that place. And I begin to pray, and I begin to pray, and I say, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, when, as I'm praying, I begin to hear voices behind me. And I was thinking, they're murmuring, they're making fun of me. Oh, yeah, they're making fun of me. But I began to pray, and I continue to pray. I finished praying, and I get up from that soccer field. And to my surprise, there's 15 soccer players praying with us in the soccer field. After a while, hallelujah, I'm practicing and I kind of forget what I just did earlier. But then I notice and I see David in the sideline and David is starting to walk. And David is starting to jog. And after a while, David begins to run. And then David is kicking a soccer ball. Now church, let me tell you something. It wasn't because I was whatever you want to think I was. It's simply because I said, if I move, if I step out, if I do what God has called me to do, if I step into the unknown, I know that God is going to honor the faith and something is going to happen. Something is going to change in the atmosphere. Something is going to move. There are young people in this place that you have been thinking, you have, you felt complacent, but God is saying, I want you to step out in faith. I want you to step out in this place. There are young people and there are elder people in this place that you have had a sickness, but I believe that God is going to heal you today. I believe that there's miracle signs and wonders that are about to happen in this house. But someone needs to step out and worship. Someone needs to step out in faith and say, God... Have your way. God, have your way. Come on, somebody. I know that there's people in this house that you have felt the Spirit of God move in your heart. He has tugged you. He has moved in you. And all he's waiting is that you would step out. Come on now. Come on, somebody. Lift up your voice. Stay where you are. Come on, somebody. The Spirit of God is in this house. The same spirit, hallelujah, that was in that soccer field is the same spirit that is in this place. And he wants to do something in you today. You're seeking a transformation. The spirit of God can do that transformation. You're seeking a renovation. The spirit of God can do that for you today. You're seeking for a healing. The spirit of God can give you that healing. Come on, step out, step out. Step out of your comfort zone. 
Come on, step out of that regular worship. Come on, step out of that worship that you always give God on a Sunday night. Say, Lord, I'm going to step out today. I'm going to do something a little crazy for you today. I'm going to do something that might not look good, but God, here I am. I wonder if there's young people that are full of faith in this house. I want you to come and I want you to lay hands on some of the people that are in this altar call right now. Come on, if you are full of faith and you believe that God is going to perform a miracle or a healing, I want you to step out into this room. Come on. You don't need the preacher to come lay hands on you. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you feel like you want to go pray, go lay hands on that sick person. Go lay hands on the lame. Go lay hands on them. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's the Spirit of God. There's something shifting in the atmosphere. There's something shifting in this place. There's something happening in the supernatural. That's it, church. That's it, church. That's it, church. There is healing in this house. God, I will not be complacent. God, I will not be complacent, Lord. I'm stepping out in faith. Oh, I will step out in faith, Lord. If you did it before, you could do it again. If you did it for them, you could do it for me. Oh, I'm stepping out. Come on, somebody. Come on, young people. I believe that there's chains of addiction that are breaking right now in the name of Jesus. You have moved, you have stepped out, and God is gonna honor that. I believe that in the Holy Ghost. I believe that there are people that have been battling depression. You are gonna be free. There's people that have been battling anxiety. I pray against that in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is healing. There is restoration, come on. Come on, somebody, step out. Step out, say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to move. Lord, I'm going to step out. God, I made this building. If you don't have the Holy Ghost and you've been seeking for the Holy Ghost, I want to invite you to come to this altar right now. If you have been seeking the Holy Ghost and you haven't received the gift of the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift up your hand there where you are. You got one? You don't have the Holy Ghost and you want the Holy Ghost. God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost in this very service. We need to step out in faith. We're going to make a prayer in the name of Jesus. And as we pray, I believe that God is going to fill this young man with the Holy Ghost. But before we do that, if you are battling a sickness in your body, if you have heard a bad report from the doctor, if you bat you're battling a sickness, why don't you lift up your hand? There where you are. 
you want to make it known, that's fine. If you don't want to make it known, that's fine. That's fine too. But there's a couple people. I want to ask the church. I want you to go run to these people right now. Come on, let's surround these people right now. I believe that God is about to do something in this very service. I believe that there's healing in this house. So we're going to pray right now. And as I'm done praying, I want us to shout. When I, once I'm down, I'm, 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 oh, I'm done praying. I want you to shout. And I want you to shout hallelujah. The reason I want you to do that is because when the people of God were walking around Jericho, they shouted and the walls came down. So I believe that walls are going to come down. I believe healing is going to happen in the name of Jesus. I believe signs and miracles are going to take place in this house. And I believe that people are going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost after we shout. So God, in the name of Jesus, under the authority of the name of Jesus, God, I pray in faith. I pray believing. I pray, God, that there is going to be something that's going to be set loose in this atmosphere. There are young people. There are elders. There are people in this room with real needs, God. And I pray that as we shout, God, every chain is going to fall. Things are going to be broken in the atmosphere. Oh, you're going to fill someone with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, the people of God, shout, shout, shout.